Arthur Smith, 37 years old, three children. My name is Sean Fresh and I became a father uh, about 19 years ago. My name is Xavier Riley. I have two little beautiful girls, twins. My name is Carlos Paglia. I'm from the East Stem part of Little Rock. Uh, this is my son, Cash Collier, AKA Cash Mania, AKA the Trillion Dollar Baby, AKA the Blessed Kid, AKA what else? <laughs> AKA Instagram. <laughs> The first time I found out I was going to be a father, um, man, I was, I'm not going to lie to you, I was nervous. I was trying to see, you know, if I was going to be able to follow my dreams and provide um, for, for a family. Um, and I was also excited, you know what I mean? Because I wanted to always be a father. That's one of those things that I've been dreaming about ever since I was a kid. So, man, nervous and excited at the same time, you feel me? Well, when I was preparing for my wedding, uh, my bonus son, Josiah, came with the package, and I remember thinking, here I am, preparing for a wedding, preparing to be someone's husband, and preparing to take on this stepfather, bonus father role all at the same time. My own father being deceased, and I thought, what am I getting myself into? Like, I love her, I love him. Is this what I really, really feel like I can do this? So I think in that moment, I had to overcome the fear that whatever challenges I had, dealing with my own fatherlessness, that I can overcome those and try something different, and that I'm creating a new tradition of my own. I remember it like it was yesterday. I felt like I was at a point in my life where I was in between music and having to choose between music that was paying me a decent amount for my career, or you know, going and building in my business, scaling it, which was, it was a no-brainer because my business that I was building at the time was, making way more than I was ever making in music. So I knew that I had to man up in a sense. I was 30 years old, actually. Uh, but I had to man up in a sense that I knew I had a kid that was going to be coming in. And if I want to put us in the best position to live, that I had to, you know, step up and make a manly decision. I always wanted, wanted children, wanted to raise children. But in this circumstance, I kind of looked at it like, man, this is just another responsibility um, based on circumstance. But, um, as these little girls grew under my care, uh, you know, your perspective kind of changes and it grew into a, a place of like, man, this is really a privilege and a blessing uh, to be able to do. So uh, that's where I am now. Like, I get to do this, not that I have to do this. So the first time, um, I have three children. Um, the first time and every time, it's just a blessing. Like, you, you get like this sense of, um, like privilege and an honor to raise like God's children. So like every time I'm always playing like gospel music, I feel like I I'm a I can plant something into them that's gonna last forever, a legacy. Um, you be wanting to see what them kids look like. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? They come out, you be like, yeah, yeah, that's me. You know what I'm saying? They be looking a little weird. You know, the nurse come in, get all the blood off of them. You be like. Sooner or later, you're gonna be something. But right now, you just a, a pile of, of, of blood and meat. But I love you though, you feel me? So the first time I saw him, man, yeah, man, oh my God. That was like, it was kind of, you know, it was it was like a gift and a curse because my wife almost died having She had to have, she was flipped the wrong way. And so he had to have, she had to do emergency C-section because when she flipped, when they flipped her the wrong way, he turned and the uh, cord started making it hard for him to breathe. So they had to do emergency C-section. And we came about it, you can only imagine, that thing looked like a like a massacre, all the blood. And, but I see this kid and I see her up there, just, uh, you know. Uh, it, was, it was a beautiful uh, feeling. I was the guy that I ain't changing no diapers and I ain't doing this, I ain't doing that. God said, look here, son, I got to test you and here it is. Now I'll get back to business. Never say what you ain't gonna do because I, uh, you never know, you know how that could pan out. Now I've just, just become more determined, more uh, focused on forever, right? The future, my legacy, um, stuff that matters, doing things with my kids, giving them uh, responsibilities that they're gonna give to their kids. Um, Financially, I try to make sure that I'm uh, stable 
Um, and I, I've also got into mentoring um, because I realized like when I leave, I want somebody to have something good to say about about their father when that when um you know when, as time goes on. So it just made me a, a better person all the way around. Uh, so I'm a DJ, a uh, musician, if you will, uh, for a profession, right? So before having kids, me and my wife, empty nesters, you really have to do too much uh, as it relates to planning. And uh, I could kind of, you know, move, we could both kind of move as we, as we wanted, but you involve toddlers and, you know, newborns, uh, all of that swiftly changes because now we got to check in and make sure schedules align. Um, I have to be more um, particular on the types of uh, gigs that I do. One, because I look at it like this. If I'm going to be away from this privilege that I have, it needs to be worth it too. So now I have to filter everything through through their lives. Being a father changed my life in a way that sometimes I can't find words. Reason being is because when I was a single man, without the responsibility of my nephew, who became a son, or without the responsibility of my wife and my children now, it was just me. I could go where I want, do what I want. I didn't really have to think about any negative blowbacks from any decisions that I made. Now being a father, I'm constantly thinking, how does this decision impact the future of not just myself, but my home? And it's a never ending battle. It's like, and I don't want to use the word battle per se, but it's like a never ending process, I guess, if you will. When you go out with friends, I'm thinking about my children, I'm thinking about my wife. When I go on a vacation, I'm thinking about my children, I'm thinking about my wife. So it's always this, they're always in the fiber of everything that I do. Um, but being a father has changed me more significantly because it impacted my academics where I took this huge break from my academics. I found myself going back to school to better myself academically, where I used to would go from one job into the next and didn't really care. Now it's like, you know, what does the legacy of my financial wealth look like for my family? So now I'm, I'm more zoned in in that area. So it has changed me in ways, again, I can't express. And this is just a tidbit of that. Having a, a male role model father in my life, I've been blessed to have a father. Uh, he's passed away since 2018, but um, we're very quiet in the West family. And but what I am, what I was able to see is like how I work, right? Like knowing that nobody's going to give you anything, that you got to work, um, and that you got to go out and get it every day. Um, I also was blessed to have a father figure in Terrell Stokes who showed me that how I work again. He used to pick me up every morning to play basketball, taught me how to drive, um, taught me how to talk to ladies, how to be respectful, how to interview. Um, and just those things just silently gave me confidence. My grandfather, he uh, didn't speak much either, but I always saw he, he had diabetes and both his legs were amputated. So he used to garden, he took care of my grandmother. He had uh, several jobs, he dressed, uh, you know, very dapper in there, you feel me? Uh, dapper, if you would. Uh, but, you know, just seeing people um, that wasn't very vocal, but also spoke in their action, that's what kind of person I decided I want. I definitely had um, positive male role models that made a difference. Not saying that that didn't stop me from making my own mistakes, but it definitely kept me from going too far. And it, and it kept uh, a certain perspective as I've grown into this position of being a dad. Um, one of the most impactful, you know, black male role models I could think of first was my great grandfather, Willie Brown. Uh, yeah. Got him Diddy. But that was my guy. Uh, so that's where I learned the ethics of, you know, hard work and taking care of your family because that's where I saw it first. Uh, so that really made a difference. Uh, how important is it for uh, parents to be involved, man? I, I, I really think it's super important because me on the other side of not having my mom, not having my dad in my life uh, until I was like, you know, late 20s. Mm -hmm. And I know what that felt like. So for me, my only goal was, was to be the best version of myself for him um, that I would have wanted my dad to be for me if, you know, we could have, if I could have redone that. I, I hate that uh, black men get a rap for not wanting to uh, be in a position or a role of fatherhood because we've been shown that, you know, a lot of us have definitely been shown that, uh, but I don't think that uh, in today's society that the men do get enough 
praise for actually doing it. Because I know for me, if the old saying is true, birds will set the flock together. All my homies that got children that are African-American males, they taking care of their kids. So when I see that narrative, I'm like, we are talking to it. All the ones I know, and I know quite a few, they all, they all are assuming the roles of being an awesome dad. So it's like, rock on. One lesson for my kids I always think about is that life is short and to be kind. I always uh, choose to tell my kids to, to work hard and be kind to people. You never know what somebody's going through. I always choose kindness. I always decide to be um, a kind person regardless of how somebody is feeling. And, you know, things will work out for you. The biggest lesson I give to them is speak up. Make sure that your voice is heard. Make sure that you are in environments where your voice is valued and be relentless in your pursuit of being a contributor to impacting this world. One lesson that I I always, what, what I would want to always stick with them is to always find the good in everything, no matter how bad, right, it seems. Because everything happens for a reason. If you can find the good, you're going to stay in those bad feelings because we know what those do mentally can do. Um, so to keep this brain focused on, yeah, I can feel like I'm upset because something didn't go my way. But I can't stay there, right? Because you create like feelings around those feelings. So if you start out feeling good, you end up feeling good, you land somewhere around great or close to it, and that's what we all aim to be. So, you know... That's kind of my take on that. The lesson that I want to stick with them, even when I'm gone, is that love is stronger than hate. Like, for real.